thank you guys for coming back with us again tonight and uh gotten to where i really enjoy this i still miss the uh, the live action preaching uh, it's different when you preach with uh with a group of people here to get some feedback and uh you know how i like amens and stuff like that so but i appreciate you guys continuing to join us on wednesday nights uh, uh i've said this a million times and here on wednesday nights i really love wednesday nights anyway uh, because it's just a it's been always been a smaller group for us more intimate and uh, just a, a group of hungry people that come every Wednesday night so I know you're still with me I hear from you often uh, to encourage me and let me know that you're there so a couple things before we start uh, I wrote myself a couple of notes to talk to you guys about I, I know that uh, we, we're keeping up as elders uh, as staff all of these injunctions and encouragements and overrulings and court cases and things like that about when church can get back together um, and we're praying diligently about that the win of that um, and I'll, I'll just share my heart with you just for a second on, on that um, uh, as I've said probably 20 times doing these videos I, I would love for us to be back together now uh, and I don't know 
how all these cases are reported and all those other things. I'm not going to get into the conspiracy theory side of it, but what I do know is that uh, that I feel in my heart that we're supposed to honor authority uh, as, as long as we're supposed to, and that uh, when the opportunity for us to come back together uh, happens, we'll jump right on it. Uh, one of the things I, I sincerely don't want to do in my heart is to come back together too soon where there are people that feel like uh, we moved on without you. You know, I know there are people that are that feel more vulnerable, and so I want you to know I really have you in my heart when it comes to things like this. I really want you guys to know that. Uh, I mean, I'm fervently in prayer every single day about when we're supposed to come back together as a church, and uh, so what I don't want us to do also is to is to rush back and 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 just try to make a point to be back together I don't want to do that I want us to come back when the father says to come back together and with that said I want us to have I want as many of us as possible to have a peace about that uh, when you have viruses or different things that show up that you never heard of before or had before you you come to some conclusion that those things are going to be here forever and uh, I don't think it'll be at this stage forever uh, but I do think that it's it's moving forward we just need to pay attention to to the the fact that it's probably going to be here and, and at some point we're going to just come back together and God's going to protect us and all those other things but I want us to have wisdom as we move toward that place and so that's my heart on it uh, we're meeting again next week as uh, as elders to just pray specifically about that you know like when we're supposed to be back together and so pay attention we'll we'll keep you informed in the meantime I really appreciate not only the hard work that's going in uh, with Ryan and his group to make these videos, but I mean, you guys are not only participating in them, but sharing them and sending them to other people. We, we've had the privilege of reaching a whole lot of people in these last few months that we hadn't reached before. And so we'll, we'll continue to do it like this and, and, until that time. We've explored every option of, about seeing you. Last Wednesday was incredibly awesome to get to see everybody. I think we served over 400 plates at um, at the Covenant drive through uh, when we had barbecue last week. Miss Shea did a good job and her volunteers. And so that was a good chance for us to get to see you guys. And some of you guys was real emotional. I got some phone calls back from, from some of you that said, uh, basically in tears, man, it was just good to see everybody because we miss each other. We're a, a beautiful family. And I, I, I felt the same way, but it was sure good to see all of you. We, we, uh, we're going to be doing that again uh, next Wednesday. And so, Miss Shay, I think she sent me a message earlier today. She's going to be doing baked chicken and the fixings uh, next Wednesday. So, But you'll hear more about that Sunday. Uh, but, but pay attention now. Watch for the opportunity to sign up for that. We'd love for everybody to get signed up by next Monday. And, and that way we know how much food to cook. But uh, And we're going to try to do those covenant drive throughs every few weeks as long as this thing lasts. Uh, just to get to see your faces uh, we've had a few people ask about doing outside services and things like that and the legitimacy for that uh, for us we explored all the options and tried to find places in the parking lot where that would work for us and it's very very hard for us to get the park the cars parked in here that come on Sunday mornings uh, so the, the thought of trying to pick one side of our building and bringing everybody that comes here is it just it just wasn't realistic for us and so for you guys that wanted that i apologize for that but we we tried to work that out but we feel like right now the best way for us to keep getting god's word out there is the way we're doing it and, and so thank you again for your patience on all of that and uh we we will we will be back together as soon as we can get back together and so thank you so much uh we're gonna be in acts 20 uh tonight and uh and i just i'm excited about uh the word i love reading the word with you guys and uh Acts 20 from, from the, the surface doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on, but uh, as with every part of Scripture, there's always God's always teaching us underlying points. As we come to this chapter in Acts, we're, we're heading toward the end of Paul's third missionary journey. And uh, I think I shared with you a few weeks ago that this, this journey was one that had lasted about six years. And so the last three or four chapters, we've covered six years of, of time and, and and Paul also spent about, I mean, walked or, or traveled about 3,300 miles in that six-year window of time. And so we're 
we're heading toward the fourth journey which will start in, in kind of in the middle of chapter 21 and uh, that's the last one uh, we'll talk a lot more about that one then but um, much of of the fourth journey was was spent from prison paul gets arrested uh, we as we come to the, even the end of the chapter we're studying tonight uh Paul's in a hurry to get back to Jerusalem, even though he knows it's a dangerous place for him. And one of the reasons that he states, even in the scripture we're going to read tonight, is that he wants to get back to celebrate the day of Pentecost. Uh, I know that for us in in real time, next Sunday is is that time. And so uh, Paul has this this ache and desire to get back to Jerusalem to celebrate that feast. Uh, with the, his brothers and sisters uh, in Jerusalem and uh, even though it's a dangerous place and we'll get into a little bit more of that uh, this evening but it's just amazing to me the passion of this guy Paul I mean knowing all that he's faced already we've watched him already be beat a couple of times he's got a couple of hard uh, things coming up that he already has kind of given gotten a vision about and he just continues on battling through and so uh, t- tonight we're going to see some more of that battle. And he just, he's a hero of the faith, obviously, uh, by reading scripture, you know that. But man, what, a, what an awesome guy and what a, what a magnificent determination he had to continue to preach the gospel. I want to learn from him that part. Uh, I love what he teaches, but I love to watch the heart of him as he passionately follows this dream that God's placed in his heart to reach the world with the gospel so uh, as we ended chapter 19 uh, it was a kind of a strange ending uh, Demetrius a, a guy who was a silver worker an enemy to Paul and an enemy to the gospel uh, his job was to make silver and um, he actually made these false god uh, Diana was the, the goddess of fertility uh, in that region and and his job was to make these idols that people were buying up and so that's how he made his income and so because sales were down because Paul was in town preaching against this idol worship he stirred this group of people up against Paul and and all the other disciples and they were they really wanted to kill him because it was messing with their livelihood and so as that chapter ends uh, there's this the stirring that this this happened uh, in this in this city and the city clerk finally steps up and says you, you guys need to calm it down a little bit uh, if if rome sees the uprising and that you guys are making a stir over here they're going to take this local autonomy what was going on they they, they kind of were under roman rule but they had to the opportunity to rule themselves so to speak and if and this city clerk says you keep stirring this 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 fire rome's gonna see it they're gonna step in and they're gonna take your uh, ability for you to make some of your own decisions and you're gonna come under complete roman rule and so the 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 riot so to speak that was started by De- demetrius was was kind of halted at that point because uh, cooler heads prevailed knowing that rome would come and and demolish life the way they knew it so we start chapter 20 with uh with uh everybody getting ready to leave town after the the uh the uprising uh, of, of of ephesus all right so it says this after the uproar had ceased paul called the disciples to himself and embraced them and he departed to go to macedonia now when he had gone over that region and encouraged them with many words he came to Greece and stayed there for about three months and when the Jews plotted against him there common theme about Paul's life everywhere he goes somebody's trying to kill him Uh, when the Jews plotted against him there as he was about to sail to Syria he decided to return through Macedonia and uh, uh, Sopater uh, of Berea accompanied him to Asia and also uh, uh, Aristotle Aristarchus and Segundus of the Thessalonians and Gaius of Derby and Timothy and Tachesus and Trophimus of Asia in other words there were this group of people kind of gathered together these guys were all people that believed in the same move that Paul was involved in so some of those names you recognize some of those names uh, we have a real hard time pronouncing 
uh, or I do anyway. But we know Timothy and some of those guys that had we had met a couple chapters ago who had come to the faith, and so they're just gathering of these disciples, and it, it, it would often gather kind of in hubs to make a decision about what was next. So these men going ahead waited for us at Troas, but we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and in five days joined them at Troas, where we stayed seven more days. So basically we have Luke and, a, and, a, and another group that decided to, to sail on ahead and then reconnect with the group later on as they were making their decisions about uh, where the next area God had spoken to them to, to go preach the gospel. Verse 7 says this, Now on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until about midnight. So even when they had a spare, a spare moment, they would, they would pull aside. And Paul had spent years now getting the revelation of the Holy Spirit and the revelation of the gospel and, and the scriptures he had known his whole life. But now he's connected to to the New Testament, the New Covenant, and he he would spend hours and hours and hours teaching. And these people were so hungry. The ones that were in that had had bought into the the the, the new way uh, were hungry to learn God's word. And so it says they basically knew Paul was about to leave. So they're up they're up late one night, just practically speaking. There they went to this building to to have Paul instruct them uh, uh, on the scriptures. It said, so he continued way into his message until midnight, so it's getting late. It said, there were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. In other words, it's dark, and they had to bring out their, their oil lamps to be able to see, maybe write down notes, uh, and, and to even see one another. While they were in that room late at night, together in that room with those lamps, verse 9 says, and in a window sat a certain man uh, named Eutychus, and who was sinking into a deep sleep. In other words, he's sitting kind of on a, my, I envision, I don't know how you envision it, but he was kind of sitting maybe in a window up on, uh, the scripture goes on to say he was up on about the third level up, third, three floors up, kind of sitting in the window listening to Paul teach this message late into the night, but he was getting really sleepy. It says he was overcome by sleep. And as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. In other words, killed him. He fell out of the windowsill or off of the third floor ledge, whatever it was, but he fell asleep and just fell off the ledge and uh, was taken up dead. But Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, do not trouble yourselves for his life is in him. In other words, Paul, uh, a man of great faith, lays almost a picture of him laying his whole body on top of this guy's body to breathe life, kind of like the picture of God face to face with with Adam at the, in the garden so he says don't don't worry yourself don't trouble yourselves for his life is still in him in other words God's not taking his spirit on now when he had come up and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while even till daybreak he departed and they brought the young man in alive and they were not a little comforted it doesn't mean when you sometimes when we read the word in English language it says they were not a little comforted in other words they were they were a lot comforted they were excited that this moment had happened before them this man had been raised from the dead then we went uh, verse 13 then we went ahead to the ship and sailed to uh, Asus and uh, so we're, we're talking about Luke here every time you read in Acts and he says then we went ahead it's probably Luke and Timothy and some of the other guys that we just mentioned a while ago uh, they had a, a plan to to join Paul on the next leg of his journey, but it says, we went ahead to the ship and sailed on to Asus and there intending to take Paul on board. In other words, we, we went on to the ship waiting on Paul to come join us uh, on board the ship. For So he had given orders intending himself to go on foot. In other words, uh, instead of him joining them on the ship for this 30 mile trek, Paul decided he would just walk. And I thought this was interesting. I don't know, I, I love reading under the you know under the surface of what scripture says and i thought it was kind of neat that paul had a, a a much easier trip if he goes and gets on the ship and just kind of rest he's been teaching the word of god all night long uh, we know he it was teaching at midnight and we know according to this scripture that he taught all the way till daybreak and took time to raise a man from the dead in the middle of it but instead of taking the easy trip to the boat so he could rest Paul wanted to go on foot alone, basically. And I like that because I feel like it's one of those moments where Paul just felt like 
you know, if, uh, I just need to be away with my father. I need to be alone. I would encourage you guys to, to sometimes we can get so busy even in church stuff that we forget to, to just spend some time just us and the father. But I, I just envision this, this, this opportunity, this picture of Paul walking, just talking with the father about the things that he'd been preaching on, teaching on, and what the direction was for his, his life moving forward. So uh, verse 14 says, And when he, he met us there at Asos after he walked, and we took the ship, we took him on board and came to uh, uh, Mytilene. And we sailed from there, and the next day came opposite of Chios. And the following day we arrived at Samos and stayed at Tragilium. And the next day we came to Miletus, for Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus so that he would not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hurrying to be in Jerusalem, if possible, for the day of Pentecost. In other words, he knew that if he went back to Ephesus, he would, uh, he would get hung up and maybe not make it back to his appointment with the Father. That's what that means when you say the feast of the Lord. That's, that word actually means in the Hebrew an appointed time. And so, so God had made an appointment to meet with Israel and all of these, these feasts of, of the Lord all the way since Old Testament times and these these Israel these Jewish people were still practicing the feast because Paul felt like he had an appointment with God and he didn't want to miss his appointment with God by stopping to meet with the church at Ephesus and so anyway I thought that was pretty cool so verse 17 is from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church and we're coming upon a time when life for Paul is getting ready to change in a drastic way uh, he, he finally calls Instead of going into Ephesus, he calls for the elders of Ephesus to come out. Now, elders is a word uh, in our church we would call them elders. Uh, but this word also translates to bishops. And there, are, there are some denominations and church groups that, that call their elders bishops. And it's basically what, what, what is, a, is a, it's just a name for the leader of the church, the people who are the spiritual, uh, spiritual responsibility have the spiritual responsibility of the church and Paul uh, has built a deep relationship with these guys over the years and he's saying I, I got some things really important I want to tell you I can't come into Ephesus because I don't want to I don't want to be bogged down there but there's some things I really need to express to you and I think this is a pretty powerful uh, moment of expression for Paul so when they had come talking about the elders he said this to them you know from the first day that I came to Asia in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility and with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly from house to house. It sounds like a, a goodbye moment. And the reason that it sounds like a goodbye moment is because that's exactly what it is. Paul's really expressing to some guys he's poured himself into and taught for these past few years this is the last time Paul's going to be with them. He, he's, he's got it kind of with a foreshadowing, a spiritual foreshadowing that uh, his life of freedom, his life of ministry and coming back to these churches to check on them is coming to an end. So he's calling these guys out and he's giving them kind of a list of his characteristics. And we'll break those down in, in just a second. But he's basically saying, uh, this is the last time we're going to be together. And I need to give you some parting words of encouragement that may keep you strong in the middle of the storm. I've, I've walked out this life in the middle of my storm and I've kept the faith and I need you to keep the faith as well. So he said, I've kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and even from house to house, testifying uh, to the Jews and also to the Greeks, a repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus. And see, now I go bound in, in, in the spirit to Jerusalem. So what, what's, what, what can we learn from this? There, there are four things that I, I really marked on my notes that Paul uh, kind of proclaims as things that he, he was about. These are the four characteristics of Paul. And you can find him in, if it's Ephesus or Corinth or Rome or wherever it is. These four things are always present in Paul's life. And these four things that he shares with these elders that he's been about he's always been about he's he gives us kind of a an, an idea of what he stood for and what we should stand for he gives us an idea of what it really looks like to walk out a faithful walk before the father as a minister of the gospel as as a priest of the king 
Number one, he said, I served you with humility. That's the first thing that kind of jumped off the page at me. He said, I served with humility. Uh, I didn't think more highly of Philipp Philippians 2, 3 says that you should, I know our children's ministry has been using that scripture the last few weeks. It says, don't, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Well, well Paul wrote that. He, he wrote that because he lived that. He walked that. He said, I've, I've served this church in Ephesus with great humility. The second thing that he proclaims of them a characteristic of his his walk is that I've I've kept back nothing. In other words, everything I felt the Lord speak to me, I spoke to you. I've I've not watered it down. I've not compromised this gospel. I've not compromised this truth. I've been faithful to the call of God and I've kept back nothing. He said, I taught publicly and from house to house. In other words, uh, I've not only not held back anything in my teaching, but I've actually put put method to put works to my actions he said i've i've taught these truths in the synagogue and, and i've taught even from house to house i've this this thing that's in me is part of me now and i i, I preach this gospel wherever i am and finally he says this the fourth thing i preach repentance toward god and faith in jesus he said that's it's kind of these are the four things that paul he's saying what he wants to be remembered for this is paul's legacy he's Serve with humility. I've kept back nothing. I've taught publicly and from house to house, and I've, I've preached repentance toward God and faith in Jesus. That's that's what I've been about. And verse 22 says this, after proclaiming those four things, and see, now I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulation awaits me, saying no matter where I've been, I've uh, uh, you know, a lot of times Christians we want uh, we want uh, easy. We want uh, it's what what we call microwave Christianity. We want it easy. And we want it now. What Paul's saying that the Holy Spirit even spoke to him about this guy who who was faithful as as faithful as anybody's ever been to the call. Life wasn't easy for him. Sometimes I hear people in this season saying, you know, I feel like the church is being persecuted. Listen, uh, we we hadn't. We, we, we don't even understand persecution like these people walked in. you know. And I'm not saying that there aren't people who are against the church, but what I am saying is that comparatively speaking, relatively speaking, what we faced, uh, even in this quarantine moment where we've separated and we, we've, we've not been told we couldn't preach the gospel in this, in this season. We may be separate, but we're not finished. We're, we may be separate, but we're not quiet. We, we may be separate, but we've not, we've not quit proclaiming the gospel. Paul's life is being threatened every single place he goes, every single day for, for preaching the gospel of Jesus. The same thing that we enjoy. Paul's life is being threatened day by day. And the Holy Spirit is giving him testimony in every city that wherever he goes next, this is what's awaiting you. This, this, this hardship's in, in, your, in your future. Verse 24 says, But none of these things move me, talking about the threat of hardships, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I might finish my race with joy in the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. He said, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, a scripture we read later on when, in one of Paul's letters. By the way, uh, it, it was in this kind of same season that Paul wrote the letter to the Romans and the book in the Bible that we know as Romans. And in one other scripture, Paul, Paul says, you listen, Philippians, he says, I mean, I, I, I consider it pure joy to be persecuted for the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying right here. Verse 25, And indeed now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. In other words, this is our goodbye. This is, I need you to know, I've stood the test of time. I have been faithful to the call. And, and if you've been depending on me to carry you, you need to know this is the last time we're going to see each other. It's on you now. It's time for you to take your stand and, and for you to, to stand boldly the same way I've stood boldly. Verse 26, Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. In other words, I've, like you said well, ago, I didn't hold anything back. I'm Everybody that stood before me, I'm innocent of their blood. I've spoke truth to them. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all of the flock among which the, the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd uh, the church of God which he purchased with his own blood in other words the, the church that he purchased with his blood he's now given you a, a, a shepherd's heart and even a shepherd's opportunity to oversee them take that call seriously 
For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. He's saying, now this, with this specific scripture, he's, he's, he's warning them about external attacks to the, to the body of Christ. But the next verse says, also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. So what's he saying? The war against the church externally will be uh, a war that, that where they come and, and, and basically declare what you're saying is a lie. The war internally in the church is generally that people begin to try to take credit for it and they begin to exalt themselves over their exaltation of Jesus. And so he's, he's giving them a warning about those both those things. He said, therefore, keep watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. In other words, don't pretend like when that time comes that you didn't, you weren't told that it was coming. Keep watch. That's your job as an elder. That's your job as a bishop. That's your job as an overseer. That's your job as a shepherd to keep watch and, and stay faithful to the call. So now, brethren, I command you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. In other words, live a life you can be proud of. Live, live, a, live a legacy of, of faith as you walk out this life faithfully. And I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. In other words, I came to you and I, I didn't take your monetary gifts and I didn't take a man's approval. I, I, I saw only to please my heavenly father. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands, talking about his own hands, they have provided for the necessities of my life for those, and for those who were with me. In other words, Paul was, was sharing about uh, basically that the whole time that he was preaching this gospel all, all over Asia and, and, and all over the known world at that time. He, he, he didn't expect uh, handouts. He, he worked hard and even uh, helped supply the needs of those who were with him. He said, I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. In other words, uh, don't be afraid to give your stuff away to help those who are in need. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. In other words, he, he's, he's acknowledging to them that he's walked in the blessings of the Lord by giving away just his, not only all his stuff, but giving away his, his life. To, to Jesus Christ and to the call of the gospel. Last couple of verses, verse 36. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with all of them. This was a very emotional moment. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, knowing this was the last time they were going to see him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, that they would see his face no more. And then they accompanied him to the ship. So there's this this is like a, a, a going away story. He's called the elders. He tells them this is his last stand with them. That challenges them to the thing that God's called them to. And they, they, they're just real emotional goodbye. And I, I could see them all gathered up hugging and crying. And then they, they, they walk with him down to the ship to say goodbye. We'll pick up verse 21. And, and like I said, this, this part essentially... Or, or even the first few verses now essentially ends this third missionary journey right when he gets back to to Jerusalem in other words he he this the the very thing that he he's been forewarned of by the Holy Spirit happens and he's confronted and so it's, it's crazy that he he his desire to keep this appointment is going to be an appointment that changes all of the rest of his life but you have to join him with me next week to find out what what that is so anyway as I close, I want to remind you to pay attention uh, to your app, sign up on your phone app, covenantchurch.church, all that stuff. You'll be hearing more about that. And I'm even going to do a phone tree probably Monday to remind you guys. But listen, go ahead and uh, pay attention this weekend, and we'll try to get something out there for you to start signing up for uh, for the, the next meal, which will be the 27th. Uh, baked chicken, green beans, dessert, you know, all the good stuff that Miss Shea does. So. Anyway, I appreciate you so much. I love you guys. I pray you have a great, great night in the Lord, and I'll see you on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock.